So this is what happens when you try to apply a lot in the Vinci Resolve that you don't really know how to apply. Pretty bad, right? And this is what happens when you actually apply a lot the right way in the Vinci Resolve. Just a little bit, just a little bit different, right? In DaVinci Resolve, there are so many included LUTs that are literally some of the most cinematic looks out there. You don't need to buy expensive LUTs or don't need to buy my LUTs unless you want to. You can literally just use the included free LUTs in DaVinci Resolve and you just need to know how to work with them. So in this video, we're gonna cover how to use your LUTs, whether you bought them, whether you're using the DaVinci free included film looks. We're gonna use this on log footage and we're gonna use this on a Rec. 709 iPhone footage just to show you guys that doesn't matter what footage you're working with you just need to know how to use your lights the right way let's start right away with log footage and for this example we're gonna use Sony S-Log3 and the mistake that many people do is importing the footage going to the color page and simply drag and drop the lot and then being like well this looks horrible and the reason is because lots are not made to just one click work this is not a lot's work. So specifically for the film looks in DaVinci, which are the free lots included with DaVinci Resolve, of which my favorite is the Kodak 2383. And if we apply that onto S-Log3, it just looks weird. It looks washed out. It doesn't look good. Another mistake that many people do is transforming the S-Log or log footage into Rec. 709 and then applying the lot and then complaining and doesn't work. The main reason why this included DaVinci LUT won't work is because they're made for Ari Log. So the workflow that I like to use whenever I use one of these LUTs is using three different color space transform. So the first one is gonna be our S-Log3 to Ari Log3. This we transform our log from Sony to log from Ari. Now here, we're gonna have one more node and add our LUT. Kodak 2383, for example. Then the node after, we're gonna put another CST, color space transform. And here, we're gonna have Ari Log 3 to DaVinci Wide Gamut, which is the color space that you should know by now. This is the color space that we're doing our grading, our adjustments in. Now, after this node, we can do all of our adjustments. And at the end, we're gonna transform from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, which is what we want to output export with. So we have three different color space transforms. So our footage goes from S-Log3 to Ari. We put the LUT from Ari to DaVinci. We do the adjustments from DaVinci to Rec. 709. We export it. This way, DaVinci understands that the LUT we're using is made for Ari, but we're interpreting our Sony footage as Ari, and so it works better that way. Another thing that I like to do is when you apply this LUT it always looks a bit weird and I like to apply this LUT as a look rather than a one-click wonder. Let's be honest, if you ever bought any LUT in your whole life, you know that most of them just don't work with one click. You always need to kind of adjust a few things and these are just the way LUTs work. They're meant to change your color into a specific style, but they're not made to change your whole image. So for this example, what I like to do is use this LUT at 30 to 40% and then the rest, I'm gonna adjust with adjustment primaries, colors, masks, all of that. Now, this was the way that I like to use these LUTs when it comes to S-Log3 or log footage in general. But if you want to apply this specific DaVinci LUT to iPhone footage, for example, what we need to do is having only two color space transform. The first one, taken from P3 DCI, Rec 2100 Scene to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and the last one, DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec. 709. If you ever imported any iPhone footage into DaVinci, straight off the batch, it looks weird. The reason is because you have to transform it into DaVinci Wide Gamut from P3 DCI Rec. 2100 scene to DaVinci because that's just the color space that DaVinci works in and that you should have set up. So, one at the start, one at the end, we put a look in the middle and I like to put the look around 20%. Usually this works better with iPhone because it doesn't push the colors as much as camera log, for example. So usually once this is applied, I do my adjustments and you're good to go. Simple as that. 
Now, we are talking about iPhones, so I want to show you guys how to use my LUTs, for example, which are a different kind of LUTs. They're not, as I said before, they're not one-click wonder. This LUTs comes in one-click wonder. Yes, you can just apply it onto log footage, onto the log footage, and make your image looks amazing with one click. So if you wanna grab them, it's down below. But we're not talking about my LUTs in this video, we're talking about how to apply LUTs to DaVinci Resolve. So the reason I wanna talk about my LUTs is because I include two different kind of LUTs. One, which are made for log, so you pretty much drag it and drop it and your footage is pretty much ready to go. And the second one, it's more of like a color look and is what I use on a daily basis on every single one of my videos. And pretty much what this does is takes your already edited color graded look and changes the color to look a bit better towards my style at least. So the way I like to use this, it's do all of my adjustments, all of my color space transform, and then have this as a last, last node and pretty much just apply the look at like 30 to 50% intensity, depending on the scene. This is how I like to use my LUTs. But if we're talking about iPhone footage, because that's what we were talking just now, you can simply just have one CST at the start, one at the end, as we said before, in the middle, you drag and drop the LUT, 50% intensity, and you're good to go. This is how easy, this is how simple it is. As long as you have a LUT that is a bit of a tamed down version of the actual LUT, and use that, Again, tame down at 50%. This just adjusts the colors and make them look cinematic. So this is how I would use these LUTs for iPhone footage. But when it comes to S-Log3 footage, which is what these LUTs are made for specifically, the workflow that I like to use is one CST S-Log3 to DaVinci. I make all of my adjustments, then I apply my LUT to the end at 30 to 50% intensity, and then I have a CST that goes from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709. This is how I use my LUT, and this is how I found the best way to use LUTs in DaVinci Resolve because you have so much more control over color, you're not trashing all of your image. And I think this is the right way to use LUTs in DaVinci Resolve. Correct me if I'm wrong, probably so many of you will go down and comment and be like, oh, you're wrong, you're gonna do this, you should do that, you should do that. I don't know what's the right way, okay? This is what works for me. This is what I think is the right way. So do your own research and I hope I help you in some way. So thanks for sticking around until this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.